All right, am I back one? Hey, welcome back America. We have got Dr. Radu Savenu. He is a psychiatrist who specializes in depression. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, now you're welcome. How many Americans would you say are affected by depression? I'd say it's pretty pervasive. It is pretty pervasive and we think each year about 20 million people uh, in this country suffer from depression. Um, so anywhere from five to ten percent of the population will experience depression. That's a pretty depressing thought. Yes. Now, um, you know, there's a feeling, it's often said that people should just snap out of the depression, they should just change the way they're acting and the feeling. It seems to me that that'd probably be pretty difficult and, and what exactly is depression? Well, there's been a lot of stigma and uh, unfortunately people still have the belief that we can just snap out of it. Um, and depression really is an illness, just like any other uh, biological illnesses that we're familiar with. So if a patient had uh, severe diabetes, for instance, you know, would you ask him to snap out of it? And, and would he be able to, to, to just turn it around? No, if he had uh, a heart attack and had cardiac disease, the same situation. So depression is, is, is the same kind of illness, ex except in depression there are other causing factors, but you know there are abnormalities in the brain that cause depression. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, a, a number of uh, neurotransmitters uh, have uh, been implicated in the, in, in, in the ideology of depression. So low, low serotonin, low norepinephrine, low, low dopamine, all those very, very essential neurotransmitters um, seem to be depleted in individuals who, who suffer from depression. So it looks like you're getting a handle on what causes it. Um, what are the effects over time? Well, I want to say a, a couple of things. Going back to how, how many people suffer, uh, women tend to, to, to uh, get depressed twice as frequently as, as men. And we're not totally sure why. We think that hormonal differences may account for some of that difference. So if you look at lifetime prevalence or risk of depression, women have about a 22% risk of, of, of suffering from depression, and men about 13%. So, you know, about, about half of that. Wow. Um, and um, it, it's, it's something that... Uh, affects you throughout your life. So depression is a chronic illness. It's not something that if you have one episode and you get through that one episode, you're going to be done. Now, and, yeah, they yeah. have a whole bunch of drugs and stuff that are out there for this. Um, are they effective? How do you know which ones to take? I, I think you have to go through trials till you see what it works sometimes, right? Yes. Uh, antidepressants are effective and, and many, many, many studies have shown that. And, and, I, and I try, I want to emphasize that because there have been some, some, some uh, publications uh, in, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in some of the journals and the magazines over the past couple of years that tend to uh, want to take issue with that, saying that antidepressants are really not as good as, as we think they are. Now, the issue is that we are still at the beginning of understanding how we treat depression. We have a bunch of antidepressants, they do work, but only about 60% of people who go on an antidepressant are actually going to have a good response. Mm -hmm. So many, many times we try one antidepressant, then we try a second one, maybe a third one. Sometimes we try combinations of medications. And you know, people shouldn't be afraid of that. That, that is... Uh, a, a, we, we do find them to be effective, but sometimes we, we need to try more than one. Well, how does somebody know or identify the signs of depression? We had one guy email earlier, mm -hmm. his wife sleeps a lot when she's not eating a lot or watching TV. Sounds like she might have a problem. Right. Well, depression is characterized by a number of symptoms. And if the more of those symptoms you have, the more likely it is that you have a clinical depression. Now, some of the symptoms include changes in, in appetite. So some, some individuals gain weight and eat more. More commonly is to lose one's appetite and to lose weight. Uh, another important change is uh, sleep. 
and generally people have trouble sleeping when they get depressed, although we see the opposite effect as well. There are depressed patients I've seen who sleep you know, 14, 16 hours a day. Uh, another Im very important symptom is, is uh, fatigue. Yeah. People feel tired the whole time. They, they can't do the things that they want to do because they're, they're exhausted. Well, that's horrible. Um, and and there, there are a couple of others I want to mention. Please, because I'm sure this has big impact on families. Absolutely. And you know, for instance, lack of interest and lack of motivation is, is another big symptom of depression. And that's going to have an impact on the whole family. Boy, and, you're talking about a person I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> not me, well, not I, me, not I, me, not I, me. I think we all know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Lots of individuals. Of course, of course. Um, and, and, you know, another important symptom is uh, losing, losing pleasure in activities that used to be pleasurable. So an individual who's, who's depressed stops doing things that they used to do and they used to like doing because they, they're not enjoyable anymore. So, you know, if you play golf, for instance, people, if you, if you get depressed, you're going to stop playing golf. Or if you like uh, to go to restaurants or movies, etc. So that's one, that's one way to identify somebody who, who is depressed. Wow, that's a great, uh, great, uh, a great rule of thumb and a great uh, kind of way for you to look at people. Now, now, we've talked about some of the treatment options mm -hmm. that are available. What would be the first step in seeking help? Well, lots of people go to their primary care physician and they start there. And in fact, you know, probably 60% of all individuals who suffer from depression or anxiety go see their primary care physician first. And, uh, it's, and there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, they feel comfortable, they see that individual frequently, etc. So that's one way. Another way is to call either the University of Miami Department of Psychiatry, um, and, and we have a very, uh, very large outpatient clinic where we treat lots of individuals with, with depression and anxiety. But the important thing is to reach out. Uh, and at least 50% of depressed people don't seek help. So at least 50%. Well, yeah, would, they're, would, they're depressed. Well, they're depressed, and they also have the same belief that, you know, tomorrow they'll, they'll pull themselves. out of it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, God, I feel bad for those people. Now, now, now in, in, terms of, in terms of treatment, you know, yes. we, we have medications, but we also have psychotherapy, counseling, which is just as effective in treating depression, especially for milder forms of depression. So people who may be unwilling to, to go on medication, for instance, they can get help through counseling or psychotherapy. Putting things in perspective, Absolutely. So now, I know that you're doing some really interesting research. We were talking about it in the green room. Can you share mm -hmm. a little bit of that with us before we have to go? Sure. Um, we're currently involved in a very, very interesting uh, international study for depression, and it involves five countries and, and, and 20 sites worldwide. And what we're trying to identify is what, what kind of patient will respond to a particular treatment for depression. So, you know, we're, we're enrolling patients with depression and part of the study, we, we do EEG studies, so brainwave studies, we, we do neuropsychological uh, testing, we do genetic uh, uh, testing, and uh, we're, we're hoping that the results of the study will give us some specific answers as to what patient, for instance, will respond to antidepressant A versus antidepressant B, you know, what patient may need the combination medi uh, of, of medications, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I know that when I hurt my back, I started to get some of the symptoms you mm -hmm. were talking about. And I found that having somebody to speak to was very important and really helped me get through the rehab, mm -hmm. the pain management. It taught me how to do that. Is that something you guys can do at UHealth? Absolutely, and that's, that's what a lot of what we do. Because anybody who has a, a medical condition, especially if it's a chronic medical condition, loses perspective. 
and, and need some, some help, need somebody to help them put things back in perspective. So especially chronic pain is a good example because when you're, in, when you're having a lot of pain, you forget what it was like last year or, or two years ago. You forget that you felt better. You forget that... You, you don't think you ever will feel better Exactly, again. exactly. So you have to get some help to put things in perspective. Now, I'll bet you that depression helps is sort of an additive or a amplifying factor to some other diseases. How about something that's pervasive in America today that's got to do with overeating? Diabetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, studies have shown that if you have depression, chronic depression, your risk of developing diabetes is very high. It's twice that of the normal population. Wow. And, and the, the, the same with having chronic depression leading to twice the risk to have a stroke later on in life. Well, that or, I could understand. Or, or develop a, a cardiac disease. Oh, and and, yeah. and a, a, another interesting uh, something to, to, to think about is pay, people who have a heart attack, if they develop depression after the heart attack and it's not treated, they have a fourfold risk of dying within a year compared to in, individuals who had the same heart attack but did not suffer from depression. So you can see how incredibly pervasive and dangerous. Oh, I've had experience so. with that. I've had experience with that. I have one friend of mine that, I, that, that, that had that type of a problem mm -hmm. and I keep in touch with him. We, we call it uh, one character at a time. Every uh -huh. day I text him uh -huh. one character, he texts me back. And that's the way we stay well, in touch. Staying connected is really the most important part. Oh, well, doctor, thank you so much. We have Dr. Uh, Radu Savania. Thank you so much well, for coming and talking about depression. Uh, if people want to find you and want to talk about depression, how do they do that, Doc? Well, our, uh, our, our clinic, though, I can give you the phone number. Perfect. 305-243-0124. Three, and uh, we'll be happy to help uh, as many people as we can. Can you do that again? I'm a Florida Gator. I need yeah. you to read slower for the Ohio State fans. 305-243-0124. <laughs> That was just for you, Doc. He's an Ohio <laughs> State fan. I had to give him the business. Thank you, Dr. Radu Savania. He was absolutely terrific. I hope that if you or anybody you know has depression, that you go on our website and listen to this show when we put it up. Absolutely top of the line. Thank you so much, Radu Savania from University of Miami uh, Health System. We call them U Health on the show. We'll be right back after this short break with a little Ollie Green. Thank you.